Hello guys, my name is Amit Sani and I welcome you in this daily Hindu announce video in the morning. These videos come in the evening, the MCQ lessons they come. Both the lessons you need to follow religiously and uh, for less than one hour you need to give for both the lessons and uh, important daily preparation for the current fair section is there. And UPSC is impossible without this section. So that's why it's important. And uh, for the last two days, these lessons are becoming huge because uh, because a lot of data and facts and uh, explanations and uh, additional information and I'm uh, discussing these articles there so uh, that's why some more time we need here 70 percent of us is going on and it will stay till 30th of october very important opportunity for all of you people and the biggest sale for your paid platform videos are available at one 159 rupees per month just 159 rupees per month and uh, join that the pocket news app and a separate app is also coming on google play and it will be available on ios also very soon and regarding these courses the des description is given below the video you can call on these numbers these two numbers i have forwarded all of your issues whatever you face in the past so regarding the uh, uh, the chat section the the customer care service and uh, other issues which are there so, so you will get the proper response there call on these two numbers pdf you will get here on this telegram channel which is given here on this uh, facebook group and you can join that you can send me a request and i would approve that and you can follow me on Instagram too. These are some words that I found today and use them into sentences. More and more uh, uh, words, rich vocabulary and it makes your uh, language and communication skill very strong and that's needed today. First issue regarding the merger of uh, BSNL and MTNL. Two important state-owned entities struggling a lot to survive and uh, they had their uh, assets which are more than any other entity but they are struggling a lot and many allegations are there that they were brought to this condition intentionally systematically and they were heavily ignored by the government of india and uh, they supported private companies more than that they had the the biggest share of spectrum and uh, their capacities their infrastructures they were the best but today they are not able to earn sufficiently and uh, they are on this verge of uh, being shut down now government says says that we do not have any intention like that and we will save these uh, state entities and there is no doubt about that they have performed very well in the past especially in the sensitive regions in the border areas bsnl uh, has given enormous service there so it's a strategic asset there an mtnl which was started earlier in 1986 and it was uh, started for mumbai and delhi now it also gives service to nepal and mauritius to mtnl and bsnl was established in in uh, 2000 year officially as bsnl it became an important psu in 2000 year but the history is uh, traced back to the uh, telegraph age in 1850s when britishers were there so uh, that was the very basic and starting communication platform there and now they are going to merge them in principle cabinet approval plan plan is there for the merger and attractive voluntary retirement scheme that is also floated here as a proposal so 70,000 crore rupees the most important issue regarding all these concerns and uh, we will not hesitate to talk about it from where that money will come for sure this will be coming from various sources like budget support and whenever these uh, recapitalization issues we, we see regarding banks regarding uh, uh, these uh, psus where failures are there but the reasons for the failures they are not the common people of india but they bear the burden of it every time when the recapitalization issue happens when any big institution like ifls uh, they fail or air india fails or uh, 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 the welfare schemes when they when they are coming means a grand crisis is there systematically farmers they are destroyed with this system and then uh, during elections they bring these welfare schemes and all and income support schemes are being bring, being brought up there and uh, they do not give any structural solution but the money is given there so in all these issues the money of the taxpayer is used heavily and those things should go towards development those things go towards uh, some facilities the jobs government should give vacancies are uh, there 
in a lot number but uh, they are not able to give jobs and they always cry for these uh, funds and all so this is the typical problem means they could have survived they could have earned their own uh, money and they could have supported this nation but they need support every time and these are the PSUs these are the uh, state entities and all and this is happening mainly with the state entities and then people they bear this burden so this is extremely wrong and collectively if we see then a lot of money and which is uh, paid as a tax by the people that is diverted towards these issues and when the allegations come that uh, intentionally these are being uh, weakened like that then the concern is really really deep and this is really a failure of the governments successive governments there now they call it a wave of change and uh, BSNL and MTNL they are both going to be must there they say that EBITDA means earning before interest tax depreciation and amortization we will turn this EBITDA as positive which is negative today and in next two years we will have this plan and MTNL will work as a subsidiary of BSNL and government says these are strategic assets and uh, we are very clear about that they have they have given a important service in the border areas in the sensitive areas and all over the country they have great assets infrastructures and we will restructure all these things they will raise bonds VRS scheme will be there and they will also monetize the assets of the two firms worth 38,000 crore rupees so again the monetization of the assets as it is happening with many of the uh, PSUs and all and uh, again this will happen with this also they have now a target of 1 lakh 5,000 5, crore rupees of the disinvestment so these are the targets today so how many they are creating new that's a different discussion but certainly they are selling a lot and how much advantage we are taking here that's to be seen because there is a major trans transition employment scenario is going through the worst phase in this nation and uh, more and more jobs are being lost here and they are not able to retain these employees like these VRS schemes are being brought up there so they may call them attractive but uh, what is the real condition there means people are losing their jobs so leave about getting the new jobs there the existing jobs they are losing and now in the uh, uh, in these uh, system based uh, the government jobs so that's really a concerning issue and that's something negative about the issue and positive is that they are bringing solution and uh, the problem which was uh, persisting for a long period of time now they are bringing solution there and uh, they are thinking and focusing on that problem there the details regarding mtnl the starting of the uh, uh, this communication network in this uh, country the starting of phones in this country this is also given here and the detail regarding the BSNL is here MTNL was started in 1986 the first telephone was founded in 1882 in Bombay and uh, in 1911 in Delhi so for these two cities MTNL started in 1986 and it has a it had a monopoly till 1992 but later the private companies they started coming and uh, uh, their influence became lesser and lesser but MTNL, MTNL is a very important huge company it is listed on BSE global depository receipts London stock exchange New York stock exchange American depository receipts so it's a huge listed company but now the st stage is like that that they are on a brink of extinction there Millennium Telecom Limited uh, was an important joint venture between MTNL and BSNL with 50-50% partnership and Mahanagar Telephone Mauritius Limited it is giving its service in Mauritius also it's the second operator in Mauritius and uh, it is uh, working there since 2004 so that's also a great achievement there for MTNL but now it will work as a subsidiary of BSNL there and the detail regarding BSNL they are given here next non-alignment movement simply a uh, credit goes to Mr. Nehru if you talk about Panchashil if you talk about uh, non-alignment movement if we talk about uh, 
द हिंदी चीनी भाई हिंदी चीनी भाई भाई डायलॉग एंड ऑल दीज ऑल थिंग्स फॉर क्रेडिटेड टू मिस्टर नेहरू बट अ प्रॉपर कैंपेन अ पर्टिकुलर वेव इज गोइंग ऑन अगेंस्ट द नेहरूवियन इरा नेहरू डिसीजन मेकिंग एंड नेहरूज इमेज देयर इन द द कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन इन द मेकिंग ऑफ इंडिया दीज ऑल थिंग्स आर बींग डिविनिस्ड देयर एंड अ ह्यूज कैंपेन इज वर्किंग अगेंस्ट हिम सो हेयर देर इज अ क्लियर indication that consecutively our prime minister is ignoring this event and they say that uh, uh, it may not be possible for the prime minister to attend all multilateral events given the huge demand on his time so this was this was said by a senior official but you see they have all the time to go into the smallest of the rallies to gain votes but they do not have time to go to a very important event there and it was a iconic event uh, an iconic proposal by india which started as a bandung process bandung is a city in indonesia and where all these south south cooperation cities uh, countries these developing countries who were the former colonies and they did not want to go in any kind of uh, uh, grouping in the world because after world war 2 it was the cold war phase two important poles for their soviet union and america so they did not want to go in any of the group there so it was a great proposal by india and the founding members were india indonesia former yugoslavia egypt and their important leaders like uh, nehru sukarno tito and uh, nasir so these all important leaders they started this uh, non alignment movement in 1961 in belgrade so never we have missed this issue except for 1979 and now consecutively we are missing it mr prime minister is not going into these meetings and they are sending some other people like like this time vice president naidu will be going there earlier mr hamid ansari the former vice president of india he attended this important summit but this is a clear ignorance of a, of a very important issue because it was a, a, a thing associated with mr nehru there important things we have achieved there with the issue of non alignment because this was something because of that nehru was held as a great statesman this policy was unique at that time and it was a really a great idea because uh, we could not afford to be a submissive country under any other, uh, any specific group and we got our, our independence with a lot of pride and we could not lose that and that was not viable for india we would have gone under some submission if we would not have followed a neutral approach for sure because we were not a very powerful country at that time and if we see the condition in 1947 it was really a frail situation britishers said that this country can never survive but it survived and uh, the policies of the starting years they were really important in the science area uh, and the, in the agriculture area in the space area in uh, uh, the manufacturing psu area we took important decisions those were bold and this policy was really a well thought policy so non alignment was the idea which was appreciated by many many countries and they all held it like the best one because in at that time those all countries wanted a platform like that and that was proposed by india there so that's important now we are ignoring this issue so this is really a, a concern and it shows that we are moving away from the neutral position in the world and that's why many allegations are there that we are becoming uh, uh, pro america there sometimes and we are trying to balance it with russia so some things are a major controversy and one more issue was associated with that and that was also important we were fighting terrorism in the 90s in 80s also and we came to an important idea of a comprehensive convention on international terrorism ccit we proposed it to united nations general assembly in 1996 till date they have not adopted this issue this important convention but now they have understood the importance of it totally when they have become the victims of terrorism and now they thought about this proposal but till date it is not accepted but uh, we hope that it will be accepted very soon and we will uh, propose this again and the growing linkage between the terrorist groups and cross border operations including terror financing networks and spread of hateful ideologies through modern communication technologies they have left no country untouched 
by this scourge so the ccit is also very very important so here in this nam summit we will propose it again next issue bangladesh seeks tourist visa on arrival in india so one issue is of the tourist visa on arrival in india especially these Bang bangladeshi tourists which are coming especially in the north northeast area especially assam so that is uh, uh, to be given by india now and one more important issue of reopening trade routes through bangladesh which are suspended since 1965 india pakistan war because at that time there were no bangladesh and it was east pakistan at that time so we fought an important war and after that after 7 years the bangladesh country was created so these routes are suspended since then now we need to work in this area this can be very beneficial and we are uh, going through the best relation phase with bangladesh it is uh, surrounded by india from three, di three directions and other countries like saudi arabia they are also going for visa on arrival concept so we should also accept this for sure and it will boost tourism there it will boost linkages between the countries and it will be a win win situation for both the countries so both the issues the nam nam issue and the bangladesh issue they are important for gs paper two here next a giant leap in computing as google claims breakthrough one thing very unique and it is unimaginable uh, something which was said to be a mythical speed that is being possible by a important uh, quantum processor there the sycamore processor that they unveiled there which is made up of 54 qubits interconnected in lattice pattern what it did what a classical computer would do and it will take 10000 years to complete that process was completed within 200 seconds by this processor this is the unimaginable speed that we are achieving and it will be a, a great contribution in the science field and it will be applicable in almost all the important areas so we may see unimaginable consequences of this processing speed and uh, everywhere this can be applied there so their claims uh, uh, some suspicions are there as the rival team at IBM they said that uh, uh, we are skeptic about their claims but uh, this is this is a great great achievement and one theory which is applied here that is superimposition means fragments of data on a quantum computer known as qubits because these are quantum bits they can be both one and zero at the same time because of the high speed there so this property known as superimposition superposition sorry means a quantum computer made up of several qubits can crunch an enormous numbers of potential outcomes simultaneously so that's why the speed is unimaginably fast and uh, simple computer will take 10000 years and it it took just 200 seconds means just 3 minutes this is really really a mythical concept and that is becoming a reality there so that's for sure and you may be asked a important issue in the prelims for superposition and the qubits there and one more issue is of entanglement which is uh, uh, two members of a pair of bits can exist in a single state so this entanglement so these kind of phenomena uh, we uh, see in quantum mechanics and now uh, in the computing also this is uh, possible there so that's really a great moment for this world next call of the wild india plans first ever snow leopard survey snow leopard is found only in the upper reaches of himalayas so that so that's why in the states like uh, jammu and kashmir which is still a state till 31st of october so jammu and kashmir and himachal pradesh ladakh uttarakhand sikkim arunachal pradesh where these higher tracks of himalayas they are present so there snow leopards are found they are present in 12 countries india nepal bhutan china mongolia russia pakistan afghanistan kyrgyzstan kazakhstan tajikistan and uzbekistan all are having snowy areas there this uh, uh, majestic animal is found and uh, a important protection program the global snow leopard and ecosystem protection gslep program which is being run by uh, environment ministry that will protect it and they will count these leopards there okay so that's important and it, it will be a, a camera traps and scientific survey to estimate the numbers of it we came with the numbers of uh, uh, bengal tiger there now this is a leopard snow leopard it is not tiger it's a 
leopard so we are talking a lot about the conservation about the nature about the renewable concepts about the uh, uh, targets there in those regions about the protection of forests about the issue of uh, 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 rejuvenating the lands the degraded lands so we are claiming a lot we are talking a lot but how much will be there on the ground we need to see in upcoming years and there's there must be evaluations of those things we should not forget after these repeated announcements there so uh, these are necessary things and internationally these are raising our image but uh, if these things will not come on the ground according to these claims certainly many questions will be raised next issue doubt over proposal to create an antarctic ocean century you see antarctic treaty system is there because uh, uh, this is no man's land and uh, this is the continent antarctica is a continent very very important uh, researches are going on in this this area very sensitive area for climate change and the uh, the the ice is melting so these are concerns there so under antarctic treaty system there is a convention or you may say commission for the conservation of antarctic marine living resources the headquarters there in tasmania australia and they are working in this area earlier they established a important marine protected area mpa in the ross sea which is there uh, near antarctic continent and uh, this body cca mlr they were proposing another marine protected area and uh, that is going to be in the eastern part of antarctica but this is blocked by china and russia 26 members are there in this cca mlr and uh, consent of all these members is needed to make it a reality but this is not possible till date they are discussing it this proposal came in 2010 by australia france and european union so conservation is the core of it and uh, they are pursuing these goals it's a pristine continent a lot of discoveries can be possible under the ice what is hidden there we do not know so that's why uh, it's a very important issue okay so both the issues are important for gs paper three mainly environment science and technology these are related issues there and the conservation for sure next as we are discussing this issue again and again in the same way uh, uh, I told you about this issue yesterday that Mr. Putin and Erdogan they met there in an important meeting and joint statement they released there and now on the ground these things are being executed Turkish forces and Russian troops they are together they are pushing the YPG rebels or the Syrian democratic forces which are the Kurds mainly towards south because in the northern Syrian border the the important secure area which was uh, floated by Turkey there that is being cleared there and uh, these uh, Kurds they are being pushed towards south so a kind of a tense situation is there a kind of a very tensed peace is there because America threatened Turkey after that uh, uh, now Trump says that uh, sanctions are lifted and the ceasefire is permanent and there is no more attack on Kurds by uh, Turkish forces but we need to see the future there we have to wait for that so Russia is also involved and that is certainly gonna irk America there and this uh, thing by Turkey the important collaboration by Turkey that will not be accept acceptable to America there and Turkey was an important NATO ally for America but now everything is happening in a negative direction when they uh, signed this deal of S-400 with Russia now Russia is involved in this uh, uh, Kurds issue so these things will be provoking America for sure but a lot is going on in America the impeachment issue is being discussed there and a lot of reveal revelations are there every other day with the China there are problems in Afghanistan there are issues and in Syria important decisions are coming the troops they are withdrawing there so a lot is happening around America next Beijing invites Taliban for intra Afghan meet wherever America is present it is involved and if it is failing China gives an important alternative that's the prime example in the Afghan issue it was a stakeholder there but not that much active now Chinese diplomats they met these ta Taliban leaders in their political office in Qatar Doha and now they are inviting them to Beijing and the ta talks with America uh, which collapsed for Taliban now China is going to, going to pick up there so 
it it is it, it is wanting a impo- important uh, involvement there because of that rivalry with america and what they are going to bring here we need to see there okay so both the issues are important for gs paper to there these are the developments which are ongoing and we will see the future there next in hong kong where these protests were started on a important bill which was brought up there uh, for the people of hong kong and they will be extradited to mainland china and for that they heavily opposed because the history as i i have discussed this issue in much detail many times that till 1997 it was under uk's possession and because it was given as a lease to uk for 100 years now hong kong uh, uh, was free since 1997 and they wanted to remain a separate entity as a country but china said it's a one china policy it is a part of china there and uh, we assert the authority there maybe it's a semi semi autonomous region and this metropolitan area but it is one china so that's why this bill was relevant and the protest was so uh, uh, furious regarding that that it is not stopping and they demanded five important things there and one is fulfilled there that officially the hong kongers they kill extradition bill the authorities they are ending this bill officially so we need to see what happens for the rest of the four demands there earlier many many issues were there with this important bill if this extradition bill would have allowed then the defendants which were there these protesters or people charged with serious crimes they could have been sent for trial abroad means in china and including to communist party controlled courts in china so they would have controlled a lot there and this was a very much uh, uh, powerful assertion of the authority there but that was protested very heavily and kerry lam miss kerry kerry lam she uh, uh, was uh, the target in the starting and she was heavily scolded by these protesters there so this issue is going on what's going to happen uh, in near future we need to see because this issue is ongoing and the protests they are still going on and uh, the involvement of uh, uk can also be there in the future because uk is struggling with their own brexit issue so they cannot tell much about this this problem but uh, uh, the uk connection is certainly there as it was a former colony there next regarding sri lanka information is there after the reports regarding easter attack authorities say that the president mathipala sirisena he ignored many issues many intelligence reports which were there consistently before those attacks but those were ignored and many reports were there that uh, april 21 bombings they could have uh, uh, averted and the panels finding highlighted an increasing presence of wahhabism and arabization of parts of sri lanka in recent years but at the same time its members told media that there was a clear connection between the violence targeting muslims in sri lanka in recent years and the radicalization of muslim youth so this problem is going on and the elections uh, uh, were due this year as uh, they, they are going to happen very soon so a clear connection is there we cannot deny that that in almost all the countries now for the political reasons security issues are highlighted highlighted a lot if there is a existing security situation then that is aggravated before every election and uh, if the situation is not there then it can be created these kind of allegations are there by many many international experts as a major security situation was not there in sri lanka but now it is there and the whole election campaigning and all the process is totally focusing on the security concern and gov- uh, and the government pushes uh, for this issue a lot in the campaigning and you see these pol- political parties is only talking about security issues as we see in india and uh, uh, when the security issue comes then national security issue comes then nobody can say anything about that nobody can uh, ask questions to the government and uh, they will not uh, be asking questions about the development issue because security is the utmost concern so this is how the whole election process is hijacked with the security issue that is happening in many many countries now even in america the mexico issue is so huge and uh, the involvement internationally about the troops everything is becoming controversial there so that's the thing in israel we supported netanyahu's government a lot and there was a clear support a heavy support by the indian establishment now mr netanyahu has lost this election 
an Israeli president now tasks Mr. Benny Gantz with forming government. He is called for to, called to form the government there, and uh, he was ex military chief. But his government is going to be a liberal union government, and that would be different from the conservative past establishment there. So that's important. And uh, Mr. Rivlin is the uh, president there in Israel, and Mr. Gantz can be the next prime minister there. Now we will come to the article. Important issue for GS paper two and three. Issue is regarding the data collection and especially the example of NFHS Family Health Survey. Here the writer said that uh, the demographers around the world they gathered in Delhi to mark 25th years of uh, National Family Health Survey, which was started in 1994. Four important surveys are done. We have the latest report for 15-16 uh, year. And it's an important household survey and uh, the process is being questioned here because the data in India this is becoming the biggest menace leave about the development issue leave about the uh, accountability issue first thing that we need is the data if we do not have the data in this much diverse country in this much huge country then we can never move forward in a positive direction and this is just like walking in a dark tunnel there because without data the responsible governments they cannot make any policy and uh, their path is never clear and it will be never smooth and always there will be distractions confusions and uh, problems will be there they will announce some things but the solution will not be there so this is the problem that data can create and here today the problems of the data are prevailing in almost all the issues like the unemployment data that was a huge controversy and that was really a shameless situation where the national statistical commission was there it was given the responsibility to check the veracity of the data and the employment data was with them but they were pressurized to not to release it and the uh, the labor bureau's data and all everything was uh, pressurized there they did not allow them to release them some of the data they they got discontinued they were not released and employment data was ready but that was not released before the elections and they said that uh, there are some issues and these officials they had to resign there because they thought that uh, this is not the way to work there we are not able to work in this environment because the truth we cannot tell there now now uh, uh, what happens elections they uh, uh, get concluded in the month of may and just after that the same data is available to the country that is released so that was something bizarre means before elections this data could have impacted the election process the whole voting pattern of the country but now they did not release it and that was the same data which was released after elections because now nothing can be done about that people have voted so that's why this situation was so shameful that we have to assess the situation evaluate the situation and we have to be very much concerning about this data problem there we see the problem regarding uh, health indicators too as it was seen in the nfhs data many experts they see the deteriorating data quality and that will lead evidence-based policy development astray that's the greatest question there here between 2005 to 2015-16 means the gap between the latest and the last to latest survey NFHS survey third was in five fourth one was in 15 16 so in this particular period total fertility rate what is that when a age group of 15 to 49 for females how many kids on an average a lady gives birth to so if it is uh, three kids then the TFR would be three but the average is taken for the whole country so that declined from 2.68 to 2.18 it came means 0.5 uh, uh, on an average number was the difference there so that was a great development so how that was possible that would have been possible by family planning the use of contraceptives but according to their data the contraceptive uses they also declined from 56.3 percent to 53.5 percent means how this can be possible so there are aberrations there means the data's quality is not reliable many reasons are there means that contract uh, 
based investigators are there those people they are hired people and they are not permanent employees of the commission there and they are collecting data and they are working in very harsh conditions they are not well paid uh, people and they are uh, uh, moving all around the country but in a very difficult position and they are bound to work there in those conditions because they do not have employment there so they are contract based employees so their work efficiency can be there but the quality will not be there because they do not have that much expertise or if they have expertise then sometimes the data is sponsored by some institution some particular uh, private organization so the sponsored data is also mixed with that and you see there is an amazing greed for data in modern india that's for sure we need proper data that's the biggest need there as i explained you, you the issue of unemployment data so in this country there is a greed and that ranges from wanting to evaluate success of poshan abhiyan and it goes till uh, uh, amazing changes in the special district program of niti ayog why poshan abhiyan because recently the hunger index came the india's condition is really really worst and uh, many kids are stunted wasted till date means the 18 19 months are gone after this poshan abhiyan what was the improvement there and according to to that that index it looks like there is not much impact there but these schemes are going on money is being uh, uh, given to these schemes and a lot of claims a lot of uh, air claims are made regarding those things and uh, based on some estimates based on some based on some future aspirations we are talking a lot in elections too so that's why the fact check is necessary if the data is will be there if the fact will be there then only the accountability we can fix there otherwise how we can talk about the accountability in this country no data no report no problem no accountability that's the simple thing and it uh, makes the way easiest for the government there so successive governments they have ignored this issue and this issue have become so in intensified now that uh, nobody cares about the proper data but we need data for the right policy making and the right development there otherwise nothing is possible so the example of contraceptive uses that is given and that tells that uh, uh, things are really compromising the quality there as i gave you the ex example of nsc which said in a important issue of uh, sample size you see in the district level sample size grew from about 1 lakh household to 6 lakh household from 3 to 4 so this was this was a major uh, uh, rise there in the sample size so nsc said that quality can be compromised if this much huge data you are taking there so you have to be very much careful about that but now it looks like the quality is compromised and the data there are many many aberrations so there is one question do we need to rely on household surveys anymore the answer is not much why because there can be alternatives local government directory identifiers can be there this is the age of technology and many many types of data can be collected with many sources and they all can be pooled there so this way this pooling of the data that can be uh, available as a leverage there and uh, this is the help that we can get at best and that would be reliable too so this is not necessary that we uh, uh, waste a lot of money in uh, these uh, investigators and uh, still they are finding it very very difficult to solve there so quality we can ensure there with the help of technology technology is the biggest solution giver for all the problems of development we have to adapt to changing institutional and technological environment for sure and uh, to move from regular employees to contract investigators in the sample survey and the use for for profit data collection these are real problems there so we have to move towards technology there okay so uh, this is the same issue which is explained here as i told you about the field investigators and their unrealistic workload and the compromised quality of the data there so that's why technology is the biggest enabler there and that can be a better alternative there and the state pollution research bodies they are not working properly and they are rarely uh, having a support there so their role must be improved there is a clear declining role of these uh, uh population research centers in fh rfhs data collection 
सो दे हैव टू वर्क इन अ वेरी पॉजिटिव मैनर एंड इन अ वेरी डेडिकेटेड मैनर बिकॉज दिस इज लीडिंग टू अ बेटर पॉलिसिंग बिकॉज द राइट डेटा विल बी अवेलेबल विद द हेल्प ऑफ दीज सेंटर्स ओनली सो दैट्स इशू नाउ वी सी वॉट्स हैपनिंग एक्सक्लूसिव यूनिट्स देर वॉज वन यूनिट एसोसिएटेड यूनिट इन कोलकाता विद द इम्पोर्टेंट बॉडी ऑफ आई एस आई इंडियन स्टेटिस्टिकल इंस्टीट्यूट विदाउट एनी रीजन दे डिजॉल्व इट एंड सिंस द डिजोल्यूशन ऑफ दिस एसोसिएशन वेरी लिटिल रिसर्च ऑन डेटा कलेक्शन टेक्निक्स दैट इज हैपनिंग इन इंडिया वी नो लिटल अबाउट वेदर मैन और वुमेन आर बेटर रिस्पॉन्डर्स फॉर डेटा फॉर एक्सपेंडिचर नो डू वी नो दैट दैट द एक्सटेंट ऑफ डिस्क्रिपेंसी इन रिपोर्टिंग ऑन एम्प्लॉयमेंट डेटा बिटवीन अ डायरेक्ट रिस्पॉन्स फ्रॉम द वीमेन इन द हाउस होल्ड और द रिस्पॉन्स वाई द हाउस होल्ड हैड मीन्स दीज दीज आर द बेसिक्स ऑफ द डेटा कलेक्शन एंड वी ओनली नो अबाउट दोज अप्रोचेज वेन दीज यूनिक यूनिट्स आर वर्किंग देयर एंड दे आर मेंटेनिंग द स्टैंडर्ड ऑफ दैट अप्रोच बट टूडे वी डू नॉट नो अबाउट दोज थिंग्स वी नो वेरी लिटल एंड दीज आर अजम्पन्स दैट वी आर टेकिंग मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम्स सो रोबस्ट अप्रोचेस वी डू नॉट नो दैट Why? Because we have ended those important uh, uh, supports there. Associated unit was there with ISI, but that was dissolved. So what we can expect there? So that's why. While research on data collection methods has stagnated, research methodologies have changed phenomenally, and the technology is giving a lot of help there. So we need to improve in these approaches. Okay, there are low cost ways of collection collecting data that we can apply there. so unless we pay systematic attention to the data infrastructure we are likely to have the national discourse hijacked by poor quality data as happened in the past with the measurement of poverty or the inconsistent data on gdp these are concerning issues and uh, there are a lot of lacks huge lacks and it looks like we are ignoring these things and we are not focused about those things we are only focused about making claims and uh, uh, talking about the schemes we are starting this we are starting this we will achieve this but only it remains till we will do that how much we have done nobody talks about that and nobody talks about the proper data infrastructure that's the ultimate need claims and the reality there is a day night difference in that and that's why this issue is concerning and important for gs paper 2 and 3 both this is applicable there next article this issue we have discussed in much detail this is the same issue of justice misra who uh, uh, declined to re uh, recuse himself from that particular case this case was related to land acquisition rehabilitation act of 13 and uh, in 14 year three judges bench gave a decision in the pune municipal corporation case then this was a review in 2018 by a same three judges bench of court and that was led by justice mishra and this was a case of indore development authority so justice mishra talked very intensively against the development in the pune municipal corporation case and even he said that uh, it's a per incurium means it is defying the law and the legitimacy there and not based on facts this much he said now this issue is again there in supreme court and a higher bench five judges bench is created for that and the same judge justice mishra is leading that five judges bench so that was the controversy that that the person who gave so intensive uh, observation about that case in uh, 2018 and now the same justice mr mishra he will be the part of this uh, uh, five judges bench and they will be reviewing their own decision how much legitimate this is and is it certainly going to influence the decision or not so earlier that article was saying that uh, on the grounds of morality he should recuse himself from that uh, uh, particular case because he was involved in that and uh, how he can review his own his own well thought decision but now the writer said that uh, this is not any problem in being a part of this uh, uh, bench by mr mishra and uh, there should not be any pressure before him to recuse himself from this important bench so 
in the NJC judgment also, Supreme Court uh, noted that a judge may be required to step down in one of the two scenarios. One scenario, a case of presumed bias. Means they need to see whether the judge has pecuniary interest in the outcome of a case. And uh, second case is that there is a apparent bias, uh, apparent bias in that case. And uh, it looks like the judge is totally biased. And a fair-minded observer would believe that uh, there is a real possibility that the judge is biased there. So in these two cases, judge can be said to recuse himself. But here the writer said that uh, uh, there is no such case and some pressures are there on the second basis. And they are saying that Justice Misra would surely be biased because uh, it is his own decision and how he can review his own decision. But he says that uh, uh, there is a important case of precedence means in the past judges they have reviewed their own cases so the law recognized that judge can be and often are persuaded to change their opinions so there is no case that he cannot be persuaded this time he will be listening these uh, arguments and he may change his mind so that's why he must be given this uh, chance there and uh, he should not recuse himself because it may set a wrong trend there in the future any just can be pressurized to recuse himself from any important case so that's why it's important so it's a repeated issue and thanks a lot keep watching it was a myth signing